this is Selma Schimmel and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Sonali Smith. Dr. Smith is Associate Professor of Medicine and the Director of the Lymphoma Program at the University of Chicago. Hello, Dr. Smith. Thank you so much. So nice to be back. What about the screening and the ongoing, the surveillance of lymphoma patients? You know, I know that you don't always treat lymphoma dep initially, depending on um, how aggressive the disease is and whether it's a high or low-grade lymphoma and mm -hmm. I know how hard it is for patients to yeah. feel like you mean I, I have a cancer and you're not going to treat me yet? Right, right. Uh, that watchful waiting? Exactly, yeah. No, lymphoma is a very complex disease and you know at the last count there's about 60 to 80 different subtypes of non-Hodgkin lymphoma and uh, what we tend to do is group them into one of three categories and that is the slow-growing and uh, yet incurable lymphomas that tend to be something that people live with and have to deal with for a long period of time. Those that are fast growing that sometimes you can cure and in fact in more and more people we can cure. And then the very fast growing that are um, highly curable if you catch them on time. And uh, with surveillance which is you know I think very applicable to all cancers, right? In many cancers you treat and then you want to monitor. And the real question for lymphoma physicians is that we have some diseases that are very highly curable. So diffuse large B cell lymphoma, we cure between 70 to 90 percent of patients depending on their risk factors. I mean that's an incredible number. And for Hodgkin's, we can expect to cure between 80 to 90 percent of patients. Mm -hmm. Now what about the, you know, the portion of patients where it's going to come back? How do we look for that? And uh, the guidelines that were based on a 1989 conference were to basically do uh, physical exams, blood work, and CT scans on a very regular basis for the first few years. And over the last, um, I would say, you know, probably 10 to 15 years, many places adopted a very aggressive CT scan monitoring approach where we would do CT scans every four months for the first two years every six months for the next three years and if five years had gone by patients were called cured. And if you look at the actual data of when the disease comes back, turns out that most of those, dis the diffuse large B cell lymphoma and the Hodgkin's come back in the first two years. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the scans we do beyond two years are probably unnecessary. In addition, when we start to look at even the scans within the first two years, there is a challenge to what is the advantage of finding something on a CT scan versus a patient coming to you and saying, I feel short of breath or I have pain, and then you investigate. Mm -hmm. So what was new at ASCO this year is that there are uh, two abstracts that were presented, one in Hodgkin's and one in diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Both of them were large studies based on databases that they went back to look at patients who had both of those two diseases, were in remission, and look to see how many patients had been followed by routine CT scans and how many patients were followed just by you know, clinical surveillance. A patient comes in and says, I don't feel well, and then you proceed. And what they concluded is that only about one to 10% of cancers of recurrent Hodgkin lymphoma and diffuse large B cell lymphoma were actually diagnosed based on a routine scan in the absence of symptoms. And so, you know, I think as a patient, what I would want to know is for every scan that's ordered, what is the relative value of that scan? There's a radiation exposure to think about, there's a cost consideration, and then there is the fact that in the vast majority of cases, it may or may not actually find the cancer ahead of time. So it stirred up a lot of controversy, and there were a lot of people who had comments uh, during the presentation of these two abstracts. Um, they're not what we call prospective trials where you know we half the patients get CT scans and half the patients don't. This was all a look back so it's not perfect science but I think what it says to me is that 
you know, we all need to be very careful when we order a CT scan that the risk and the benefit of that scan is, is explained. What's been the protocol to screen and do surveillance on lymphoma patients thus far? Beyond what had been, you know, originally taught, this very, very intense, every four months CT scans mm -hmm. for the first two years and then every six mm -hmm. months, the current NCCN guidelines um, have already scaled back the number of recommended scans. They've already said that we're doing too many and we should be um, perhaps relying more on physical exam. And the current guidelines actually recommend no more scans after the first year of, of finishing therapy. And I have to say that this is a little bit um, unnerving, you know, because both patients and physicians get reliant on the scans, right? right? You build your hope up like, okay, I hope the scan is negative. And then when it's clean, you know, you, you, you breathe a sigh of relief, both the physician and the patient. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly for me, it's hard to let go too. But, um, you know, I think we all will have to deal with this because if it's truly not benefiting, in right. other words, helping, you know, if you find the cancer earlier on a routine scan, and, it, and yet that doesn't change how well patients do, then it's doing a scan for no reason. So I, I think it's going to generate a lot of discussion. I think the guidelines are going to change. Um, and we, you know, we, I think as a community, really need to look at this data um, and, and come up with a plan that's, you know, palatable to both physicians and patients. And um, the third person in this entire discussion is the insurance company because they will see guidelines that say no more scans beyond a certain time point. And some physicians may feel that's too early. They want to do the scans. Or patients may say, no, I want a scan because I want to know for sure that I'm still in remission. Um, and uh, insurance companies are frequently, you know, saying we won't pay for it. So I think there has to be sort of a collective awareness of exactly what you're trying to gain from doing these scans. Thank you very much, Dr. Sonali Smith, Associate Professor of Medicine, Director of the Lymphoma Program, University of Chicago. Thank you very much, Dr. Smith. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me again.